Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Zoxron, and I'm back again with another mod roundup, this time for the Institute. My 13 Brotherhood of Steel mods video is extremely popular, but I managed to find 21 Institute mods that I'd like to talk with you about today. Most of these are PC only, but there are some that do have Xbox versions. I'll link to all of these mods in the description of this video, so please open up the description to find a link to the mod of your choice. I do provide Xbox links where applicable. Before we begin, let me tell you what I look for in a mod. I'm looking for Institute mods that are practical, that are utilitarian, and that are lore friendly. I want mods that not only improve the gameplay experience, but make the faction feel more realistic. So, for example, when I'm looking for texture mods, I don't want mods that turn synths into stormtroopers for give them all lightsabers instead of institute guns. Those are all really interesting mods, but I prefer mods that are lore friendly, that keep in with the theme of the game, that don't make the enemies overpowered and don't make you overpowered, that simply change cosmetic things to make them more convincing. There are a lot of mods out there that reskin the synth uniforms to be black or to make the entire institute black, and while those definitely have their place, I want to keep with the original theme of the institute, which is white, clean, pristine, clinical, and find mods that simply bolster that look and feel. Anyway, on with the mods. By the way, this video might have some plot spoilers for those of you who have not met the Institute yet or haven't completed the game, so just, just a warning ahead of time. First up is AS Institute Workstations. All right, so you find the Institute, you join the Institute, they give you your private quarters, and there's no workbench, no armor station, no weapon station, no chem lab, no cooking lab, none of the tools you actually need to play the game. What is the point? AS Institute Workstations fixes that. In the director's quarters, you'll find a new control panel that acts as a workbench. This allows you to scrap anything in the director's quarters that you want. It'll also allow you to decorate it up the way you wish. He also placed crafting stations around the Institute. This forces you to get up off your duff and run around the Institute a little bit, but I just think that makes this whole playthrough a little bit more immersive. You find armor and weapon stations right outside the Synth Retention Bureau. There's a cooking station inside the cafeteria, a chemistry station inside the biosciences section, and a power armor station inside the advanced systems section. All of these workbenches are connected and share inventory with your workshop in the director's quarters. Frankly, this is an essential mod without which trying to live and work out of the Institute is simply impossible and makes an Institute playthrough unplayable in my opinion. Great little mod by Dubot. Thank you, Dubot. Next up, and a similar option, is Institute Director's Quarters by Eleonora. This mod does the same thing as the last one, only Eleonora also decorated up the place to look amazing. This player home is typical of Eleonora's work. It's filled with all sorts of lived-in clutter and a lot of doodads that depict Eleonora's typical humor. She did a great job of keeping in with the theme of the Institute. Everything is quite clean and clinical. But she also made sure to add a few homey touches to make it feel like a lived-in room. This one comes with workshops in the actual director's quarters itself, so you don't have to run around the institute when you need to craft something. But the drawback is that each of the workbenches is independent. For some reason, she wasn't able to connect them all so that they shared inventory. Still, a great little mod and another wonderful option for someone who's trying to do an institute playthrough. Thanks, Eleonora. Next up is Institute Power Armor by M150. I did an entire other video dedicated to this suit of power armor, but it's so cool that I figured I needed to mention it again here. This Institute-themed power armor suit is actually based on concept art for the Institute that you find in promotional material for Fallout 4. It never made it into the game, so M150 decided to recreate it, and it looks amazing. It even comes with a jetpack that fits the theme of the power armor. So if you didn't like the X01 suit and you're not fond of the pure white paint job that comes with the Institute and you wanted something that looked a little bit more interesting, this mod is for you. Next up is Institute Teleportation, exit the Institute to anywhere in survival. So as you all know, in survival mode, fast travel is disabled, which makes a lot of sense. But the thing with teleportation to and from the Institute is that it's not a convenience for the player that just helps the player save time. In the lore of the game, you really do teleport. Like, that's a technology the Institute invented. That's one of the major themes of the game. 
Now, even on survival mode, the Institute is constantly teleporting coursers all over the Commonwealth. And yet, if you're playing on survival mode and you join the Institute, you can't use the Institute to teleport anywhere else in the world. It seems like a weird limitation that kind of breaks immersion. Everyone else can teleport everywhere, but you can't just because you're playing on survival mode. Instead, the Institute teleportation teleports the player character just outside the CIT ruins. Doesn't make any sense at all. This mod aims to fix it. Fast travel is still turned off in uh, survival mode, but with this mod installed, you can teleport anywhere in the world if you're working with the Institute, even on survival mode. Thank you, Pokepunch. Next up is Institute Paint for All Power Armors by Invoc. The Institute paint job, in my opinion, is one of the most attractive paint jobs for power armor in the game. The white color really stands out, the logo is crisp, I just love everything about it. The problem is that it only works on the X01 suit of power armor. This mod gives you the option. The Institute paint job is now available on every suit of power armor, the T45, the T51, and the T60. Thanks, Invoc! A great companion to that is X01 Power Armor Institute Paint True White by Woundwort. The Institute paint job that comes in the game is actually not pure white, it's an off-color, almost kind of ivory looking white. And I actually like that. I think it looks much more realistic, it looks a little bit dirty, but this mod author didn't like that. He wanted a more pure white, a much more clinical white. This mod replaces the Institute paint job with a pure white version. So for those of you who want to clean up even the Institute, this is a great mod for you. Next up is Buy Power Armor at the Institute by Bitmage. You can buy power armor frames from Good Neighbor, from the Atom Cats, from Diamond City. But for some reason, when you get to the Institute, even though they have the best paint job for the best power armor suit in the game, they otherwise almost pretend like power armor doesn't exist. There are no power armor workstations in the Institute. You never see anyone from the Institute wearing power armor. What's up with that? This mod tries to make the merchant a little bit more user friendly. You can now buy a power armor frame from pretty much the only major armor and weapon merchant in the Institute. This is simply a convenience. It makes it so that you don't have to travel all the way to Good Neighbor just to get a power armor frame for your new suit of X01. Thanks, Bitmage. Next up is Assassin Lord 33-3's Institute Weapon Retexture. There are dozens of Institute weapon retextures on the Nexus. It was hard to pick just one. For this selection, I wanted a high quality weapon retexture that kept with the theme of the Institute. There are plenty of mods that make the Institute all black, or make the Institute white even whiter, or give the Institute gun neon green and neon pink glow sights or something crazy like that. But there were very few that kept what was there with the Institute, just made it a little bit more high resolution. This mod does that exceptionally well. If you take a look at the before and after shots, you can see a huge difference between his mod and the vanilla game. This makes Institute weapons feel heavier, feel more like they're made from real metal. It's an excellent addition to anyone who's seriously doing an Institute playthrough. A great companion mod to that is Institute Heavy Weapons by Kosik. There's an Institute Power Armor paint job, but you don't see very many Institute soldiers wielding heavy weapons. I think at the very end of the game when you raid the reactor core, you fight two synth bosses that have heavy weapons, but aside from that, not many. This mod reskins the Gatling laser, the missile launcher, with Institute themed colors. The Gatling laser in particular is really beautiful. It's almost as if it was designed to have these Institute colors. The reason I'm including this one is because all of the Institute weapons have a very specific theme. They look like they're part of a set. And I wanted any player who decided to do an Institute playthrough but use heavy weapons to be able to carry on that theme. With this mod, now you can. Thank you, Kasik. Next up is Better Institute Synth Relay Grenades by Stiffy Woods. You get the relay grenades in the game and you're so excited and you throw one and then a Gen 1 synth appears and you bump into it and it dies. Ugh, <sighs> really? This mod fixes it by making the synth grenades actually usable. These grenades can summon a Gen 1 synth, Gen 2 synths, Gen 3 synths, <laughs> huh? 
or even some Gen 2 eradicators that don institute power armor. Attacking enemy. And it could summon coursers and gorillas. Finally, you get to actually see somebody from the Institute besides the player character wielding Institute power armor. Pretty cool. Throw one of these bad boys into a crowded raider encampment and watch your synths wreak havoc. Love it. Next up is AS Synth Armor Redone by Dubot. And this is my favorite retexture for synth armor in the game because it's really lore friendly. He uses the same colors as the Institute theme. He just retexturized the synth armor to give you a choice between a 1K and 2K version. It makes the synth armor look much more interesting and to look like it wasn't made out of plastic. This mod also has a black version, so if you really want to rock some black synth armor, you can, but I prefer the white version. I think that is much more lore friendly and it better fits into the theme of the Institute. Very well done, Dobot. Next on the list is Synth Overhaul Cast by Mauro Takai. Now, I don't typically like mods like this because I think that they break immersion. But this mod is so well done that I just couldn't produce a video like this without mentioning it. This mod not only retextures synth armor to have 2K or 4K versions, but he made over 70 different armor set combinations, adding a whole lot of diversity to Institute synths and Wasteland synths that spawn in your game. It comes in black and white as base colors, and then you can randomly find a synth wearing chrome colors in gray, blue, purple, orange, blue metal, and green. He's retextured the underlying synth uniform, and he's retextured coarser uniforms. The new textures have a, a camo-like appearance, so this definitely turns your synths into much more of a military unit. They don't really feel like they're part of an institute anymore. They've got a more Terminator-esque vibe to them, but it's still really well done. Some of the best, most high quality textures for synths in the game, and I couldn't produce this list without mentioning it. Thank you very much, Maro Takai. Now, I don't know if you ever had this problem, but for the longest time, any synths wearing the synth uniform in my game had these strange black lightning bolt shaped bands on their arms. I could never understand it, and it drove me mad. So I found a mod called Enthusiast Synth Armor by Burling to Beast, which retexturized the synth armor and added new normal and spectral maps. For some reason, this fixed the issue, and it gave the synth armor in my game a much better appearance. Sadly, this mod author has removed his mod from the Nexus, and I don't know why. Thankfully, the mod author set permissions for his old mod to open, giving us the freedom to use it any way we want, and so I republished it as a new standalone mod on the Nexus. This is a nice simple change for anybody who suffered from that same black lightning bolt on the arms glitch that I had, and the retexture is beautiful. It still makes sure that the synth armor has depth to it while improving the quality. The synth armor is important because it's basically equivalent to the Brotherhood of Steel jumpsuit or the Miniman Miniman uniform or the Vault Vault suit. It's the base suit for the Institute upon which we place all of the armor. Any player playing through the Institute is going to need a copy of the synth uniform to build an armor set on top of. So thank you for the wonderful mod Burling to Beast. I don't know why you took it off the Nexus, but thank you for opening it up. And for those of you who want this wonderful retexture, I link to my version of the mod in the description of this video. Another option is Clean White Synth Uniform by Free PL01, and this whitewashes the uniform. It just turns everything white. It removes the gray and black toggles and straps and bleaches them white. It cleans it up. It's not my personal style. I still like a little bit of depth with my uniform, and I don't mind it looking dirty. But for those of you who are really wanting a pristine, clinical, clean synth playthrough, this mod may be great for you. That's Clean White Synth Uniform by Free PL01. Next up is the Synth Suit by Hoax2. This is one of my favorite synth-inspired bodysuits that you can find on the Nexus. The synth suit is a retexture of another mod called the Precursor Suit, which itself is a retexture of another mod called the Gets Outfit. It's an extremely high quality texture with wonderful normal maps. You can see the depth on the G3 icon on the chest and arms. It's great for somebody who wants to wear synth armor, but had a hard time finding a synth uniform, or who doesn't like the look and feel of the synth uniform. I like it because it looks good while not being too skimpy, and it's lore friendly. 
this is the costume that I place my synths in. So I'll go to my settlements and I'll use the settlement management software to discover which of my settlers are synths. And I'll put them in this synth suit and then put them in synth armor. And then I'll pretend that after the destruction of the Institute, you have all of these Gen 3 synths that are now roaming the wasteland looking for refuge, and all they have with them are the synth gear that they had from the Institute, which is armor and costumes. They show up to a Minuteman settlement, and of course the Minutemen give them safe harbor. This mod also comes with a jacket that you can wear over it. I'm not too terribly fond of the jacket, I think it's a little silly. I also don't think it works very well with armor, so I prefer to keep my synth settlers just in the costume with armor on top. Very well done, Hoax 2. Next up is the Pompous, set by Raffle Toss. I went over this mod in my last video on Brotherhood of Steel mods, and I'm going to do so again here because the Pompous set has a great retexture for Institute playthroughs. It shares the same bodysuit mesh as the Brotherhood of Steel version, only it rocks some nice Institute colors. This is an extremely high quality mod, with beautiful normal and specular maps. It comes with a few more skimpy versions, which I'm not going to show off here, but it does come with a more modest One Piece version, which I really like, and that's what I'm showing off here. It also has a coat, but I don't like this coat. It's a little too dark for my taste, and the logo is just kind of big, bold, and in your face. Still a wonderful mod and a great option for those looking for a synth-inspired bodysuit. Next up, what might go best with a synth-inspired bodysuit is the synth jacket from HN66's Easy Girl Outfits for CBBE. Now, warning ahead of time, this mod does have some very not safe for work costumes, which I won't be showing off in this video, but the reason I bring it up is because it does have a jacket that actually makes sense for an Institute playthrough. The jacket looks like it has been made from a synth uniform, and it works really well on top of a synth bodysuit, like the Precursor or the Pompous set. So if you want a jacket to go along with yours, this is the jacket that I would recommend. Next up is the AS Craftable Institute Stations by Dubot. And this is a great mod for settlement builders who really want to bring the look and feel of the Institute to their Commonwealth settlements. This mod gives you workbenches that each have an Institute look and feel. Armor benches have Institute armor in it, weapon benches have Institute themed weapons on them, so on and so forth. They're a must have addition to any serious Institute settlement. Next up is Workshop Synth Production by Kentington. I did an entire video dedicated to this mod, but this is another great Institute themed one for your settlements that allows you to actually manufacture your own synths. That's right, the synths that you manufacture with this mod turn into settlers at your settlement. You can capture the image of any NPC in the game and then program the workshop to produce as many synths as you want that look like the NPC that you've captured. This is great for someone who's wanting to role play an expansion of the Institute or maybe a settlement where you store and reprogram synths before delivering them to the Institute. Or maybe it's a settlement where you program synths before killing their human counterparts and sending the new synths off into the Commonwealth. Who knows? There are a lot of great potential here. Wonderful job, Kentington. Next up is Institute Reclamation Chair by War Machine X Zero. This adds a variety of new chairs and beds to your settlements that are straight out of the Institute. You can assign settlers to them or use them yourself. Um, they're pretty creepy. <laughs> they, uh, th this is the model from the Institute Reclamation Chair, which is what they use when they wipe a synth. They're basically reclaiming a synth and wiping the synth's mind and trying to reprogram it. Doesn't really look very comfortable, but I'm sure that very clever players could find a use for really interesting chairs like this in an Institute-themed settlement, especially if you're basically recreating an Institute Reclamation factory. And last but not least is Fair Synth Skin by JC Eats. This is a super simple mod that just makes all of the Gen 2 synths in the game have much paler skin. This adds for a more spooky appearance to the synths. And it's a great match for those of you who want your synths to be more intimidating or who want to play against synths that are threatening and scary. It really makes them stand out in the Commonwealth. Thank you for that, JC Eats. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. What a video. I kind of got carried away, but I hope that this video was useful to you. Remember that most of these are for the PC, but that there are some Xbox versions in here, and I link to them in the description of this video. Please check the description to find links to both the PC and the Xbox versions of these mods.
Were there any wonderful mods for synths that I missed? Let me know in the comment section below. I read all of the comments on my videos and I respond to the best ones. Please subscribe for more Fallout 4 and Fallout 4 mod content like this. I've already got a Brotherhood of Steel mod video done and I'm going to be working on a Minuteman, Railroad, and Raider version as well, so stay tuned for that. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers get access to my private Discord server as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad you're here watching. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all very soon.